All right, everybody. Welcome to the Combat Pack Podcast Pack Podcast. We finally have the original three horsemen of the apocalypse here. Saki and Creative. And uh, it feels like an Avengers team up. Like we're all finally back all together because like for the past three weeks, all of us have had issues to where we couldn't all be in the same Discord at the same time. So it feels good to have everybody back. The old crew's back. The OGs. <laughs> right, right. Other people didn't want to participate, so it is just the three of us so far. However, we are uh, discussing maybe adding another fourth person. So those of you that Should perhaps would be interest, interested, uh, you know, reach out to one of the three of us. But uh, you want to get right into the do of the day. Saki, you were saying something about leagues? Yeah, um, so for those of you guys who kind of, like, missed at, like, what's going on and kind of, like, understand what's the current trend of the community at the moment, um, Armani Viz and Herbs uh, both did, like, a 10v10 with their island community and uh, the BGX community. Wait, um, what is a BGX? So BGX is uh Is Armani that, like, Viz's Black Guy ter- Zatter? I have no idea actually i never understood what it meant uh, all i know is that that's the term that armani viz gives his exhibitions like that's the title of his exhibitions uh. um but uh what's really cool is that they basically got like their crew you know armani viz hangs out with like coisy train uh who else was on there uh doom and then the island community had like the island members which is basically like patient impulse uh old default auto myself zen time and we did like a whole 10v10 sort of like texas versus florida style it was really fun uh we raised a lot of money we raised like 500 dollars uh to give to the winning team via Matcharino. and um we we basically just did a 10v10 and they won um and now uh emperor is actually challenging BGX, so that's the next current thing, uh, like the next big event that they're doing. But the whole trend is uh, now we're going to start hopefully seeing uh, some tournaments that are going to involve like a full league. So for example, um, Aquaman brought out an idea of creating like a full-on team with your communities and going through a whole league and sort of like the NBA, football, but fighting games, right, for Mortal Kombat. And Slayer actually is already starting on the league. He has, like, A-Rurk, Jukes, all these other uh, players with their own little rosters and whatnot. Basically, everybody's taking my WWE idea. God damn it. (laughs) My idea is golden. My idea is better than all of theirs. (laughs) The TTE cannot be contained. I love all the team battles I've been seeing going on. It's so much fun to watch. (laughs) I feel like it's, it's good really for morale. Hype. It's really hype. It's really good for morale. It's also, um, so what's interesting about this is that obviously a lot of us are kind of like burnt out on tournaments because at one point there, that was the thing. There was so many tournaments happening. Um, so many exhibitions happening. Like for example, the other day I did like five exhibitions in one night and oh, I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, you guys need to chill on the exhibitions. Like I'm happy for the opportunities, but girls, I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, please don't burn yourself out. <laughs> oh my God. It's the worst. Cause then you like debate with yourself, whether you actually still have a passion for the game and blah, blah, blah for like a month. <laughs> then you get back into it. That's exactly what I did. I signed up for like, multiple tournaments in a week and then i was just like dqing from half of them i was like you know what i'm done i need a break (laughs) i haven't even signed up for a tournament in like three or four months jesus you guys are insane Uh, well it's all in the grind to get better get some of those sets introduce yourself to different players so that you can get those sets with those players like i i've honestly been um since like those since that exhibition night i've actually been like really reaching out to players like doom shadow and actually getting games with them so that i can get better um gotta work on your devora match and work on the (laughs) devora match exactly so which by the way worked out really well the other day when i was playing a 
a, a, a devora and i remember you told me if they don't like amp it it's punishable i'm like bet here we go <laughs> yeah all oh, the fingers yeah i was like mm-hmm. they got to spend the bar you wait for the fifth hit and then they're safe but if they stop at three fucking press press a button mm-hmm. like well damn i think these but, legs uh... are cool though <laughs> Yeah, so this is the really interesting thing that I feel like the community really needs because I think we've talked a little bit about before how like um, the NRS community is not like the Tekken community where it's really more welcoming and more friendly, you could say. It's very selfish to a certain extent. Um, And so seeing this league thing actually kind of shows improvement on that attitude and improvement on that mood. Uh, where we're seeing actual players come together and actually like do stuff with their friends and uh, see people just basically reach out to other people uh, to be part of these leagues. So I'm really excited to see what's going to come out from this. Um, I really want to see how Slayer is going to like set the bar. Um, but just the fact that like Aquaman already has sort of like a game plan, you could say, and just going kind of from there, that's an idea, or someone else can try to go for that idea. Um, it's really cool. It's really fun. Like I said, it's it's a new it's a new thing that like we really don't get a chance to experience because of how many fighting games don't really offer like either a tag team uh, mode or just basically team modes. Uh, bring back tag team. <laughs> yeah. So now, of course, we we now we're now seeing people really come together, and it's really hype too because, like, you look at the promo that uh, Armani Viz and em- Emperor are doing, uh, like Emperor Outworld, and it, they're just the most funniest thing you can find on the timeline. Um, plus, the community is also getting hype too because, of course, everybody knows about Emperor, everybody knows about Viz, and just how crackhead his crew are. So it's it's really cool stuff. It's really fun stuff, and uh, I really hope to to see some some positive stuff from this that's freaking awesome like I'm, I'm kind of like super cheesed to see that people are stepping up to do that sort of stuff i am still annoyed that everyone's stealing my my trash talk entertainment <laughs> wrestling league but uh you know uh it's it's cool to see that the community is kind of working together um mm-hmm. more so like i think that it, it's it probably comes from the fact that the newer guard is sick of the drama from the past. And they're just like, you know what? We're not going to do things the way you guys have done them. Like, you guys all have exposed yourselves as being terrible, awful people. And so we're going to do our own thing the way we want. And I I think that's really fucking cool. Yeah, I really like the concept of pretty much us, like, reclaiming our own community. It's great. Like, <laughs> And I think the team battles, like, with uh, this and... BGX versus the island. I think they might have really like might have started something with that because I've been seeing like even just on social media platforms like like maybe it's not even a direct correlation to team battles and all that stuff. Maybe it's just the timing of it, but it's just like everything in general has seemed to be so much more positive since that had happened. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. Um, so what was really cool about the BGX versus the island is the fact that um, when we were when we were doing it right, uh, there was two people that had beef with each other. Actually, technically, three people. Uh, it was Train, <laughs> the All <infamous> beef. Train. <laughs> and train. then it was uh, Averick and Odifal Auto against Train, right? So oh, yeah. and Averick <laughs> were on our, on the island team, right? And then a uh, train was on Biz's team. And what was really cool was uh, basically we played some of the games, right? And then it got to train because Doom was playing with Anomaly. When Doom got out, then they put in train to have Averick versus train, which was like the main event. Uh, train beat Averick in like a really hype ass reverse 3-0 oh, and, so good. <laughs> and then a and then train fought full uh od full auto <laughs> where old full auto beat train and then lost to crazy and it's just it's really really cool to just see that uh these like this whole event even if there was beef was really fun and it kind of just yeah. shows that the community can be there for each other i mean we really need to with everything going on 
Yeah. Oh, I know BGX was like sweating so hard when Koizy Mercy to Slayer, and he almost made the whole comeback. <laughs> That's pretty ballsy, Mercy and Slayer. Is he still playing? Yeah, that had me sitting up. I was like, yo, you don't want to do that. <laughs> The Slayer's a nut, bro. <laughs> like, like, you can't give that man a chance. <laughs> it's funny because people have been shitting on Slayer, you know, calling him washed up, you know, like blah, 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 blah. And I remember, because I've known Slayer for like a fucking decade. Like, I remember when he was just a little kid playing Injustice 1 uh, <laughs> here in SoCal. And so, like, when people started shitting on him, calling him, like, washed up, and I was like, dude, like... I've seen Slayer play for so long. There's he's not washed up. He may be rusty, but that the way that dude's mind operates in fighting games, like you, he's never gonna lose that. And I remember not when, else. yeah, when Prince Panther was talking about you know um, sponsoring people, that was the guy I DM'd him. I was like, dude, you should probably pick up Slayer. I mean, pick up me, <laughs> but I'm not gonna not. sit here and just pimp myself out like somebody that I know for a fact isn't sponsored and, and is good enough to be sponsored as Slayer. Oh, and yeah. uh, and then, like, it was like two day, two or three days later, he announced that he was picking up Slayer. And I was like, awesome that you picked up Slayer on my suggestion. Uh, you didn't pick up me, though. But, I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm happy for Slayer. Yeah, dude, Slayer. And the thing is, the guy's pretty entertaining to watch, too. His shit talk is hilarious because it doesn't make sense half the time. <laughs> yeah, SoCal lost it. We lost a lot when he left. Like it was, it was kind of a big, uh, a big hit to the SoCal scene when Slayer left because he was like back then he was up there with like Tyrant as far as like who's dominating the Nether Realm scene tournaments. Yeah, he got his wing. He got his wings a while ago now, Slayer. Yeah, it was like him and Tyrant. Crazy Bone and uh, Reaper were kind of running things for a while. And then, obviously, there's new players in the SoCal scene afterwards. I find it weird, though, because, like, when I talk about these notable players here in SoCal, like, a lot of people are like, who's Tyrant? And I'm like, what? What do you mean, who's Tyrant? You know? like. But I realize... Hey, you're like, talking about a hitbox Tyrant, right? Yeah. And it's like yeah. the SoCal scene, because we have such a very robust offline community here in California. And because it's fucking expensive to live in California, a lot of us can't travel to like other majors. Yeah. And so like we have a lot of notable players, but nobody like, you know, if you haven't been following NRS for like, you know, since MK nine, then you may not know who tyrant is, but it's like, it sucks. And I'd like to see more of like the SoCal scene, get out and get exposed. And, uh, these little team battles are yeah. dope, dude. I'm gonna get Team SoCal, man. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get teams. I'm gonna call up Tyrant. I'm gonna be like, hey, man, we gotta <laughs> go. We gotta go represent Team SoCal. Go Need to call like Team SoCal and then get like one guy from Canada, right? <laughs> one guy that's not even from there. That's like the no mix up, mix up, right? You know, well, I mean, fuck, Overwatch League has like, oh, yeah, this is the fucking Texas <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it's like five Koreans and a Middle Eastern guy. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> those guys are from Texas. All right. <laughs> you know, and like all of them have different connections and they're all in different. Like you can visibly see they're in different countries. You're like, this is still Team Texas. <laughs> right. I don't know if I would do a Team SoCal, though. If I were going to get involved, I would do it with my community on stream. But like the problem yeah, you would is, you probably just have like a team badger. <laughs> yeah, but everybody's like across the world, like that. See, that's the thing. Yeah. Is it being regional, right? So you had islands versus Texas or whatever. It's like, all right, all those guys are like regionally together. Whereas, you know, if we were doing like stream teams, like it's like, okay, well, yeah. I'm gonna grab this guy from England who's really good. <laughs> like, oh yeah, cool. Let's play on the 170 right now. <laughs> I think that would be uh, a lot of fun, though, if, like, the three of us would be. did, uh, like, a versus. I mean, I know there's a lot of overlap between me and, and you guys, our, 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 our viewership, but I think it would be funny, um, like, you know, Team Trash Talk versus Team Saki. <laughs> team Mew. Team Trash. Team, team Trash. <laughs> team Trash versus Team Mew versus <laughs> Team uh, Creative Sucks. Team Team Collective. Right. Creative. 
Imagine all of the all of the team that like all of the team members on creative are all collectors. <laughs> Right. Oh. That's what Emperor is. You know that. You know what's the really I'm crazy thing that. is that all of all Emperor upgraded. Is upgraded I don't think that has anything to do with the fact that the like <laughs> it wouldn't be the same as Creative's team being all collectors. I think Emperor all being Jackies is <laughs> it's because it's Jackie. Yeah, that, that one's like me. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, hey, I mean, you can't tell me that's not a team that you would be afraid of. Is a team made of all Jackies? <laughs> Yeah. Like, literally, the whole tournament's a 50 50. Like. I don't know. I, I think my uh, I think the players that I, I have cultivated in my community would be pretty tough to tough to beat, uh, especially on the Xbox side. There's a lot of hidden talent on the Xbox. If I if maybe that would be my thing is if I started like my own team and tried to go and take out other teams, I would do it with all the Xbox players. Because that would be good for them, though, too. Xbox doesn't get as, as much exposure. They don't get any. And there's some dope-ass players. Like, you know, I've been... Yeah, because all I know is, like, Dream Eater, and that's kind of it. Dream Eater and Koizy. Yeah, Team Eater and... Well, yeah, even and even Koizy's on PlayStation now. I was just going to say, the really weird thing about Koizy is, like... So, someone in my community said, oh... Koizy's on PC too, and I'm like, yeah, but he's not a PC player. And then it's like, well, why not? And I'm like, because he's he's technically an Xbox player that only comes to PlayStation when there's a tournament or something big. It's really yeah. the only time he comes to PlayStation, and he will play Combat League when it's requested of him. But for the yeah. most part, he stays in the Xbox scene and only comes on that side. So he's technically an Xbox player. Uh, but still, regardless, it's it's really those two. Um, you have Hijinx, who's also an Xbox player. Blackout. Oh, yeah, Hijinx, yeah. Blackout is one. Um, like, there's a couple of them, but at some point, they all have come to PS4, which is really, like, the sucky thing. It's like, yeah, there, but they've had to come to, even Slink, for the longest time, and look how good yeah. Slink is. Slink, for the longest time, was on Xbox and could not play in PS4 tourneys. And then he got a PS4, and obviously, that's his where he's going to be dominant at, because that's where his community is, and that's where the community is, um, unfortunately. But it's like all Xbox players, if they like, they could be great on Xbox. They have to come to PS4. I don't know if they have to come to PS4. I've been doing <laughs> my due diligence trying to highlight players on Xbox. I mean, today is my uh, community lobby day with the Xbox community, and it's interesting because on PlayStation Day, I got to struggle to get people to fill these lobbies. But on Xbox Day, <laughs> there's a waiting list the whole there. day. Like yeah. they. Because they're hungry. Xbox is hungry for the exposure because nothing is ever run on Xbox or run for Xbox. And so a lot of the Xbox players, it's like, all right, well, there's no tournaments that are streamed. There's no, you know, outside of just starting their own stream. A lot of Xbox players have nowhere to go to try and get their name out there. And so when I host my Xbox lobby day, like that's probably my highest viewership day of the week. And I can't, I can't, I can't get enough empty spaces. Like the eight fills up almost instantly. Um, yeah. So NetherRealm needs to get off their ass and get us our crossplay lobbies. Because I'd like to do a, a team Xbox, uh, you know, exhibition and get some crossplay lobbies guys. would really change things. That would be so cool to be honest, Badger. And maybe like you take that that Sunday and you do that. I don't know if I don't know if maybe you would need a little help reaching out to the community, but I I would think that would be so cool to do because there is not enough. Again, almost all exhibitions are on PS4, which is really sad considering that there are players from both platforms that are super dominant. Yeah. Well, I think it's like, and I think that's one of the reasons why my Sundays have been so popular is because it's not just that the players aren't getting any exposure. It's that, like, there's nobody doing content for those people. Nobody is serving that market. You know, people want to see who's the best on Xbox. I think that's a lot of the reason why Koizy became so popular in the first place, because they were dominating on Xbox, and it was like, oh, wow, this is the best person on Xbox. We've seen the best people on PlayStation, but what does Xbox have to offer? 
And so yeah. I think my viewership does well on Sundays because people are like, oh, it's Xbox Day. I can see players that I haven't seen before doing yeah. interesting things that I never thought. That's one thing I will say about the Xbox community. For, for being somebody that kind of toes the line between the two, I will give this to the Xbox player base. They are far more creative and resourceful than uh -huh. PlayStation players. Like, they, those Xbox players, they find tech that I'm like, what? You could do that with fucking Variation 3 Sonya? What the fuck? And on PlayStation, you have a lot of, like, tryhard basement virgin types that are just like, I'm going to play optimal. I will play the top tier, and I will win, and I will defeat Sonic Fox. You get onto Xbox. <laughs> I mean, and it's true. Like, you know, you guys are on PlayStation. You see that. But you get on Xbox, and Sonic Fox isn't on Xbox. So those guys are like, fuck it. I just want to win. I'm going to fucking, I'm not playing optimal. I'm not using top tiers. I'm going to use fucking, you know, fucking variation three Liu Kang and just mix you up with nunchuck grabs all day. And, oh, shit, I'm going to be variation three RoboCop and do a frame trap and the Xbox community really needs to be highlighted and spotlighted more because you find that more there than you do on PlayStation. On PlayStation, it's just the same old boring tech you've been watching for the past fucking year. <laughs> uh, I think my voice, uh, someone told me my voice is a little low, uh, so I'm going to try to speak a little louder. Um, it's It's been a weird weekend for me, so... <laughs> it's been a weird fucking summer so far. Um... I'm just gonna been a weird life done, yeah, pretty much. But uh, fuck, leagues sound cool. I'm like hyped for that. I want to start my own fucking league. I'm hyped for it too, man. I think it's so. <clears throat> excuse me. So I think, um, like I said, there's just been so much shitty things happening in the community that um, and like I feel like again we've spoken about this before the nrs community unfortunately uh is not well known to be very helpful when it comes to support and um actually supporting creators and uh community members that don't make a top eight essentially um so seeing this whole leak thing just kind of like shows that uh, the new generation of nrs players are hungry but they're hungry to work with each other you know um so I'm, I'm super excited for it. It's super fun. It's really, really hype. Well, because it's bringing back the old school. So you, this is yeah. like a new thing to you guys that are younger and haven't been a part of this forever. But like this was the old school. Like that was how it was done was you had local rivalries within arcades. It's like, oh, OK, you know, where are you from? Oh, I'm from the arcade across the street. Well, fuck across the street. You're in, you're in fucking Nickel Town, baby. All right, and over here we don't play that shit, right? And that's kind of that mentality. That's that. That's bringing that back. It's bringing sexy back, you know. And I certainly, if I can get involved in any of these, I certainly will. I have some killers in my roster of players that I call upon, and uh, I would definitely be involved in some of these lobbies. Because I think that that brings back that that love and feeling that we've been missing for so long. I just got a feeling. I don't know the rest of the song. Right. <laughs> like, That's the only like only part I know. <laughs> I think those regional beefs would be fucking great, but I think it would be cool if streamers did that with their own communities <laughs> instead of like, oh yeah, this is the Massachusetts scene. It's like, nah, man, like this is creative in his crew, you know, because we live in a world where the Internet doesn't fucking it doesn't have borders. Like there's no like, you know, I play with people in Europe all the time, so it no longer has to be like, OK, well, fuck, you know, we're in we're in Iowa. Who do we got? We got like four people and three of them aren't very good, but we got that's it. Whereas now you can build your team, build your squad across the world. Be like, yo, dude, I'm going to grab this French dude because fuck you guys. He's French, you know, and I think that's fucking cool. I would totally get involved with those and I would bring my uh, I would bring my crew and they would be they would. My crew plays with fucking gimmicks, man. They're just going to be doing gimmicks and mix ups all day. 
Nobody actually works on their nooch. Nobody works on their fundamentals or their footsies. They're just like, hey, I'm plus five, and then you have to guarantee it overhead. <laughs> You're just like, yo, dude, that's a gimmick. It's reactable. Ah, oh, you can't react to this. And then they do it to me in, like, fucking 120 ping, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> get the fuck out of here with that. Get the fuck out of here with that. I think that's one thing I do more than, like, other streamers. Because other streamers, when they do fucking, when they play with their viewers or they play with somebody from chat... And it's like shitty ping and they get lot beat and then they end up on fucking scalped with Twitter. And it's like, oh, yeah, I beat Honey Badger. And it, like I call him out. I'm like, motherfucker, you pressed down one when you were minus nine. Get the fuck out of here. You did not beat shit, dog. You want to record this and post this on Twitter that you scalped me? Go ahead. People will see. People will see that you fucking they'll see exactly what you beat me with. I haven't gotten caught until you get prop fished. Right. <laughs> so. So, you know what's really funny? And this is actually, so I'm going to say this as a PSA for anybody who's doing Combat League and you're a streamer and you're a content creator. So, this past week, I've kind of been dealing with this one dude who uh, actually took my clip of my stream, actually took my stream and posted it as part of his YouTube video on YouTube to his 46 subscribers. Nice. Um, <laughs> So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to post my tea bag in you with Devora. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so basically he came to the channel, he followed whatever. And then someone's like, yo, Saki, this dude, uh, went ahead and took your shit. And I'm like, okay, well show me the proof. She showed me the proof. I reported it. He's like, Oh no, I'm, I'm going to take the video down. He took the video down. But then decides to send me a really nasty message and goes on my YouTube to dislike all my videos. <laughs> and what I'm like, fuck? okay, well, <laughs> you know you've made it when people are petty like that. So that's right. number one. Thing is, what was the point of him deleting the video if he was still going to send you mean shit later? <laughs> I recorded it to YouTube so YouTube can actually use uh... that as a copy strike against that. Um, Makes sense, yeah. Especially if it's like a video. Uh, music's a little, like, it's like a little tricky. Um, but then uh, that happened. And then now I have Chap, who took a meme that I made of me as his profile picture. And I said, you know what? It's imitation is the best form of flattery, I guess. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of like just sitting here and, and seeing the... Hollywood side, I guess you could say, because that's a Hollywood side. <laughs> hey, yo, uh, just to let you know, person in chat that said I can kick your ass any day on the day, just let me know. I'll do a first uh, and ten and I was oh, trying to, in. I was trying to keep <laughs> my on, chat in order, <laughs> and somebody already timed them out. I, <laughs> I mean, I understand the sentiment. I get, you know, a lot of guys thinking that female players are not very good because historically they really haven't been very good but to sit there and make a generalized statement like that mm, like yeah it's true for the longest time girls weren't very good like i mean really the only female player that's made a name for themselves as like being good is uh kayane you know and she's like this godlike soul caliber player like, I've seen her beat people with her eyes closed. I was like, what the fuck? This woman is insane. But, you know, to sit there and say that women in general aren't very good, that's just some ignorant shit. Yeah. Anyways, anyways at the end of the day, that's what that's what I work for. Like, I, I, people a lot of the times ask me, hey, Saki, why are you, like, super tryhard? And, like, what are you trying to accomplish here? And, and that's that's literally part of it. I don't want people to think that we're that to make that general assumption. Um, and I also want to show that like we're we're we've been here. We just haven't been really vocal for our reasons, of course. Um, and we're just going to, you know, we're just going to show off that that's that's what the, the, the wave is going to do. And we move on from that. But anyways, good scene right now. Good things happening. Positive things uh, with the, the community. I'm extremely excited. And yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get involved in these leagues. I'm gonna get all of my my Xbox people and my PlayStation people. I'm gonna build my own team. It's gonna be team team trash talk, team team trash talk. We're gonna co we're coming for the belt, baby. We're coming for the belt. Trash. 
right? The trash. You know what I'm saying? We're coming for the belt. I would totally, like, I would totally make that a fucking event day. If I could organize that and just on, on a day just grab my community and be like, yo, Fridays we're taking on all other streamers. Collaborate with other streamers, you know, and uh, and have my team and just go. It reminds me of like my old Kung Fu days, right? So I told you guys I do I, I know Kung Fu and I studied at a Buddhist temple with monks and shit, right? And one of the things we used to do, because like if you I don't if you're not into martial arts, one of the things people in martial wait, arts wait, really wait. hate. Let me stop you right there, Badger. What? You were bald at one point. Um, I'm <laughs> bald right now. No, I wasn't a monk. I just trained at the temple. Um, and that temple was like trying to for, imagine him bald. It's bugging me. That temple was notable for having the uh, head monk uh, as a female. And you don't find that oh, a lot really? in Buddhism. So the the head monk was a girl. Um, and they I learned kung fu there. And one of the things in martial arts that people hate are like, like the McDojos, right? Where you just go and you pay three hundred bucks and they teach you how to punch and kick and then give you a black belt. And it's like, those guys can't <laughs> actually fight. So what, like, my crew at this temple used to do is dojo hop. And they would just jump in a car. They would go to the local, like, oh, Taekwondo. All right, let's go in there. They walk in. Hey, who's the master? We're going to kick his ass. You know, like in the olden <laughs> times, right? Like, ah, oh, you have disrespected my mentis style. You will face my wrath. Ha ha ha. You know? <laughs> and so, like, they used to do that. And, like, that, that's so cool that that's kind of coming to MK. You know, what with it having that, you know, kind of kung fu kind of uh, aesthetic. And I would totally be down for that. I would go up and I'd be like, Saki Sakura, you fool! Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> you must die. My skills are formidable. And Saki, like, has to actually lose because it's going to be a part of her redemption arc. Right? Yeah. Right? Basically. Basically. It's, it's a. needs to have the villain arc. It's the karate kid all over again. That would be like, and then there would be like a, a montage of you training to like some like 80s synth pop, just trying to, you know, you're the best around, you know? It's just like still images of Saki just pressing buttons. Right? Right? Like, that shit would be funny. That shit would be funny. I would totally. I would like a totally random image of Carpal Tunnel. I would totally, totally, absolutely <laughs> do that shit. Like, I'm talking to, I'm calling out chat. Who's coming with me to invade other streamers? Who uh, who wants to be on Team Trash Talk? You know what I'm saying? I guess me and Saki would have to share creative unless creative wants to go rogue. And, ah. You know what I'm saying? We, I don't know about if we have to share. Tatiria yeah, knows be that awesome. she belongs with me. So. Uh, that'd be um, great. I'm going to take her mod status away. Dude, it would be like <laughs> fucking Dynasty Warriors, the romance of the Three Kingdoms, right? Yes. I want to yes. be Lubu. I get to be Lubu. He, he had... Somebody pulls me out as like a trump card, and then I'm just like, haha, I'm my own team. And I just like lose the first fight. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be Lubu. You, you shouldn't pursue me. And uh, <laughs> what was his woman's name? Dao Chan? Yeah. I'm Lubu, and I need to go and find me a Dao Chan. And like, I'm going to go and invade other streamers. Be like, yo, dog, let's do it. 5v5. Your community versus mine. I think my community could probably stomp a lot of other streamers' communities. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Noting, of course, that creative is part of my community. I consider him <laughs> part of my community. He's, he's, uh, he's subbed. So creative would, uh, you know, I'll just roll up with creative and be like, Hey, Tom Brady, I'm going to fuck up all your community with creative royalty. V10. <laughs> How many people you got on your team? I got creative. So I just want to say, every time I see Tom Brady stream, he is complaining about more <laughs> or he's just complaining about more uh, like, you know honestly, what? I have honestly gone to his streams 10 times, and every 10 times he's complaining about something. <laughs> as much as he complains, though, he's one of the few content creators that's putting out new tech videos. Because he was That's one true. where I found the Jackie uh, Dash tech. And I was like, what? You could just dash under that shit? Oh, fuck yeah. Like, Tom Brady's still labbing and putting out uh, stuff. But I remember when I hosted, I raided him one time. And, like, he was just bitching and complaining. And all my viewers got mad at me. Why do we raid this guy? He's just mad. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like it, I don't know what to say. I don't know. It's not my I fault. Go, I'll, I'll... 
<laughs> yeah, you're like, how am I supposed to know that? Right. I've, I've had I've had moments too where I've raided someone in my like with my community, and they're like, Saki, this dude is like, why this guy? Opposite, like, why <laughs> this guy? And I'm like, listen, you know, this is just probably one bad stream, right? <laughs> Like, really, like, was not, like, where it wants to be. <laughs> right? Like, uh, I, that's why I hardly ever raid. Like, I will raid if it's one of my viewers that's, like, streaming or if you're on when I log out. But other than that, I, I'm i hesitant to raid streamers I don't know anymore. I Kind of just look at it everything real quick and i'm like hmm who seemed i'm like who would i want to watch right now and then and that's just where i throw everyone right because a lot of streamers are just bad people are always <laughs> like why why don't i get any views how come you get views and i'm like because i'm good at streaming i'm just really fucking dope at this like i suck at mortal Kombat, but i can make it look fun <laughs> i can make it entertaining to watch a lot of streamers are not entertaining to watch. Jesus God. But yeah, it's it's been a it's been a it's been interesting three weeks. How have you guys been? Have you how how creative? You got to the top eight. How was that experience? Well, he already um, discussed that. Yeah. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wasn't here. I'm sorry. You gotta go. No, and I... It's on YouTube. <laughs> uh, well, Talk to you. you never but... gave me the link. So, Ooh. suck it. I gave you the link to <laughs> you my never... YouTube before. I thought you had subbed. You oh, my God. Exposed. No, 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 no. Oh. Exposed. You didn't, you didn't give me oh. the link to oh. either. So oh, shit. I'm exposed. You've been exposed. Yes. I'm exposed. Oh, exposed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, because you uh. just did that, uh, what, uh, five exhibitions and whatnot? How did that go? And how did that go? We gotta yeah. talk about something. We gotta talk about Saki because she hasn't been here for two weeks, and she got I know, sponsored. Saki doing something today too. She got so, sponsored. Okay, so the correct term actually is uh, I signed with um, uh, Dynamic Focus. Um, you got put on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> basically, it's like a more of like a mutual partnership than uh, than sponsor. Um, it's really cool. Uh, to be honest with you, so um, oh my goodness. Okay, so I I they came to me after I did this thing that Trey Pound invited me to, which was basically a five v five of content creators. Um, it was between Echo and Jay Coon. I was on Jay Coon's team because Echo decided to pick Dream instead of me, and uh, he thought that he could have like a turn. Like he thought he could have uh like have me but jaykun's like nope saki's mine <laughs> um so it was really fun uh they saw how like dominant i was and i really helped out the team um and like kind of being the anchor by the time uh jaykun and echo fought each other so you were the best and on then, your team right uh yeah yeah i second nice. best because jaykun was really good jaykun's a really good shang and a really good robocop um and then, of course, Echo had, like, Sindels, and he had, uh, he had Dane, he had Scorpion, because Dane went as Scorpion. Um, and, of course, there was Raiden, which Raiden's dumb now, can we just say? Yeah, Raiden's even dumb. dumber. <laughs> it's dumb. I, I right? like Raiden being top tier, though. I like him being top tier. I, I do, too. I do, too, because, again, lore-wise, he kind of deserves it. Um, I just do think that he's a little more dumb than what yeah. we all thought. Uh, those buffs really helped him out. I don't think he's like top tier necessarily, but it's just like he has a degree of brain dead now with the back one two mix. <laughs> like, right? It's like his general game plan is the same, but now it's just like, oh great, now I gotta be irritated with this shit, and now I'm gonna do something stupid because of it. <laughs> right? Maybe I'll switch to raid and I'll be a raid in main. Why because not? you can I just mean... back one two grab them like five times in a row, and then the one time they try to duck it, back mm -hmm. one two storm cell. <laughs> like... But that's why when they try to like they try to go for it the first time, I just do yeah. the duck and I like I OS it because I rather they just know I can duck it, and then I'm already kind of like one step ahead of their mind game. Um, <clears throat> just take the grab but, yeah. most times. Yeah, I just take or that take grab doesn't grab do too. a lot of damage. I'd rather that than Storm Cell. Unless I have meter to break, then and if I really believe in the read, I'll take the risk if I got meter to break, but 
I don't have yeah, any reader to break. I said to everybody, I said to everybody, yo, Raiden got the katana treatment. Nobody, <laughs> believed, nobody believed me. And then now, look, here we are. Here Shit, we I are. wish Katana was good too. Fuck. That character is garbage. <laughs> mm. Depends on the variation. Well, she's kind of like matchup dependent. She's not fun to play. You can say that about a lot of characters, though. But we can all agree Highborn, Highborn kind of covers all those Because she's so dumb. She's a dumb yeah, character. Yeah, Highborn is a... Uh... Yeah, Fearless isn't as good, but like, if it's going to be a matchup where she can outzone them real heavily, yeah, GG's. <laughs> it's not even that. It's like, just anything into lasers. Anything in it, hit confirm into fucking Highborn side stab. But it's just yeah, like push buttons, right razors. There. Like, you know what? You can't punish it. Everybody's like, oh, well, it's minus nine and this and you're not going to punish it because you're always going to win. To be honest, I just mash on it every time and, and it seems to get me far. <laughs> right? That's Sometimes, sometimes I've learned from this game, honestly, mashing has to be part of your strategy. Like I was talking to Herbs about this and I was like, you know, Herbs, because Herbs play, Herbs plays really honest. And I think that's where I get like my honesty from is because we play characters that like we take our turns we play fun fundies that are like take our turn basically how a fighting game should be right and in this game it's crazy how like it will give the upper hand to players who play crazy yeah, uh, but that's only and... online offline you're not getting away with that shit well, what are we on right now, Badger? Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. <laughs> I think people are picking up bad habits, but I still won't play that way. People beat my ass all the time, and I'm like, dude, you mashed when you were minus five. Get the fuck out of here. Like, you mashed on... You, you were punishable. You were minus 19, and you mashed an uppercut to get a crushing blow on me. You know that shit doesn't work. You know what you did. Like, and I refuse to play like that, but a lot of people, you know, that want to win more than they want to get better, and so they're going to continue to use on unoptimal scrub tactics. That's fine. When offline time comes I back. The only is when they mash on, like, plus 20. <laughs> well, offline, offline, you're going to see everybody who has those bad habits, and then everybody's going to be like, what the fuck, man? They're going to get exposed. Gonna... <laughs> 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 we're just going to see, we're just going to see all of that happening, but, um... In, in all honesty, it's been a really cool experience. Um, Dynamic Focus is actually a really amazing team. Uh, they're f first off, they're really, really welcoming. They're really like family, which is crazy for me because um, I came from two orgs. The first org was more of me working for them instead of actually streaming and uh, playing for them, and then the second one was completely the opposite where I uh, I thought I could actually like have a home and it wasn't really a home because uh, it did not have that like fam familial feel like we would go to events and it would feel like four strangers that don't like each other basically which is crazy because if you look at messages like we there was no inkling of that and then it just felt like four odd strangers just coming together and just not like not at all yeah. dating and being a team and just kind of doing their own thing and what's really cool about this team is it doesn't feel like that and it's very supportive um and very for you too like i feel like sometimes um orgs take advantage of, sometimes um... <laughs> <laughs> that's like 90 percent of the time i like Depends that i'm gonna use that i'm gonna say that i'm gonna be like sometimes <laughs> depending Point. on the orcs of course um but like sometimes you see these these players uh in contracts and you don't see how much they're getting or sorry you see how much they get are, they are getting taken advantage of uh but you don't like they don't see it which is really disappointing because um like someone could be uh earning a lot oh she cut out hello Oh shit! Did my Discord Baki's audio cut out, cut out for you? Yes, yeah, I was just about to say, did her audio cut out? For me, it did. Okay, so oh, I did go. a dumb thing. I did a dumb thing. Oh, oh, okay. Uh -oh, I thought uh -oh. that was... What did you do? <laughs> I put my computer in airplane mode by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh pressed my God. the button that wasn't supposed to be that way. Brilliant. But anyway, <laughs> I know, right? Um, so oh, like, it's just. It's just <laughs> 
to see uh, players that don't see that they're getting taken advantage of. Like, they could be earning hundreds of subs, right? And that org just told them, hey, because you're part of our team, you need to give me those subs, um, which has happened for some players. And um, what's really cool about Dynamic Focus is that they're, they're, they're very for me. They know that I work hard. What they're looking for is really good representation. Uh, of course, support in not only brands and sponsors, but in uh, actual promos and, and things like that. And just looking to just grow mutually. So uh, it's really nice. It's a really good experience. Um, some of my uh, tweets have been a little strong. As of late, <laughs> so many things happening between like a little the, bit. the sexual harassment that's been happening and oh Black yeah, Lives matter as well. Um, Wait, people are harassing you? <laughs> no, uh, in regards to what happened with oh, the and just the, the world. Yeah, yeah there's just um, been so much lately. So much, so much, which is why again the leagues is like such a good, like such a good idea right now because that's what we need, you know? Yeah. Um. But uh, it, they're, they're very supportive and, you know, obviously they'll call me out if I'm wrong or if I'm not in the, the right position. Um, but for the most part, they've been just super supportive and helping me grow and learn. That's awesome. Did they? So they reached out to yeah. you, right? They, they came and they said, yo, yes. we need Saki on our team. So guys listening, right? Those of you listening, this is how you get sponsored. Go ahead. Walk us through so, it, Saki. Um, <laughs> so, so this is interesting because I also spoke about this too on my channel. Um, and someone was like, Saki, how did they sign you up? Did you apply? Did you do a tryout? And I, I told them like, no, they actually reached out to me. And the reason they reached out to me is because they see my involvement uh, with the community and with my streams. Um, it's more than just me playing and winning exhibitions and being really good at the game. Uh, because if you really think about it, the, the game's only going to last for a certain amount of time, right? So a, a team's not going to look to invest in someone who's going to be only good at that at this game, right? Yeah. They're looking for someone to actually, like, represent them beyond just the game, whether it be in streams, whether it be in community involvement, whether it be hosting tournaments or commentating tournaments. Um, and so they saw me actually commentating. They actually saw me uh, organizing tournaments and being very involved in the community. That's something that I've always tried to do uh, when I first started streaming MK is what can I do to give back to the community? Um, and then, of course, uh, not just playing the game as much as I do, but just consistently streaming, consistently being a good brand that they'll, they're comfortable for, uh, for actually being represented. Uh, so when I did this thing with Trey Pound, um, not only was it really big because it was uh, a event that had many content creators uh, it split into teams, but I showed how dominant and confident I can be in- um, Damn, in she said dominant and confident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, that's basically crazy. it too. That's basically it too, it's confident. It's being just super confident in who you are and who you are as a content creator um and going from there um like i said like it's it when you when people when teams are looking for you as a player uh well the majority of the time and that's, this is really cool fact too that i learned um when i joined is they're looking for you to stream and the reason because of that is there's a chance you may not be able to get on stream if you're playing. Like, you could be at a major, right? And none of your matches are on stream. And yeah. you could have gotten out of pools. And yes, you could be represented, but you didn't represent them on a stream. You just represented them on a, on a, basically on a bracket. That's basically what happened there. So yeah. when a team is like, you need to stream X amount of hours. They're looking for that because that's their form of representation. That's their form of brand that they'll be able to see their brand and you connect it. So being a streamer is pretty important when you're playing, uh, you know, and when you're looking for uh, being sponsored. Obviously, you need to have a very respectful stream or at least a stream that like brings a community together. Yeah, so I'm not you getting know, picked up by anybody anytime no, soon. No, I'm not <laughs> I didn't say that because you see you trash talk, but you bring a community together. I'm saying more of like you're not you don't want to have your your entire 
uh, channel focused on drama. You don't right. want to have it focused on uh, who's doing this in the community or uh, who's talking about this in the community. Or, you like you don't you don't want to have it focused on that because that's the last thing the brand wants. I mean, again, look at Evo. Look what happened to Evo. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's like that's pretty much how it goes. A lot. Of, I I know sponsored players. I've been on a team before in the past. And, like, a lot of people don't know how to really get into that upper echelon of, like, how do I get sponsored? How do I do this and this? And they start, like, kind of looking, you know, reaching out to all these teams. And that's how you get those bad deals. Like, really, if you want to get sponsored and picked up, you kind of got to do what Saki's been doing I mean, what, for, like, two years now, building your community and streaming consistently. The, the, Technically, uh, three years. Streaming consistently. Uh, this is my first year in um, – in the FGC, um, and I will say that finding the community that fits you is really important because for the longest I was streaming games that I didn't really find myself uh, evolving in until I got to the FGC. Right. So that's also important too. This is, is your like home now. Where... Yeah, it's my home. It's my home. Um, <laughs> you brought actually a good point though, Badger, um, because I, for example. I see Koizy a lot in uh, saying, like, I want a team that sponsors me, and sometimes on his tweets or on their tweets. Um, and I feel like he ha they have the potential to definitely be sponsored because obviously they're really good at the game. But a brand's not going to go for someone who's not really branding themselves. You know, like, people, people will look at his streams. People will just say, okay, well, he's just really good at the game but doesn't really talk on his streams, doesn't really interact on his streams or on their streams. Um, yeah, that's the only really good thing. They stream, but they're not, they're just streaming the game. Yeah. They're not really making a persona out of it. And that's what people need to like, again, remember, like when you get into streaming, it can, you, you gotta be clear on what you want. You can stream for fun. There's no problem with that. But if you're just streaming to stream uh, or just like playing the game, then that's okay. Just don't expect the other stuff. Don't expect the, the the cool stuff that comes from it. The opportunities that can come from it, because not all you don't have to be sponsored with the door, but not all orgs. If you're looking for it or looking for them, are going to be looking at you uh, with that with that in mind. So it, it all it depends. It all comes together. And um, again, three years is because I, it comes with experience between marketing experience, between actual stream experience, and just been playing really hard and just showing that I'm, I'm really, really, really um, determined to make a name for myself um, more than just being good at the game, too. See, and you bring up an interesting point about that, because a lot of people think if I just get really good and I do well at tournaments, I can get picked up and sponsored and my life goals will come true. And the reality <laughs> is, like... Honestly, because I know a lot of people that are really fucking good and I know people that are sponsored and I know people that make more money than either of those people and have a better lifestyle, a better career, and they're not that good at the games. But I mean, look at Maximilian. He hasn't placed in a tournament in at least, what, 12 years or something. And yet he's probably making more money in the FGC than, you know. Well, probably not. Anybody. Than, yeah, probably not more than Sonic. Almost Fox. anybody. Yeah. But like that's almost everyone else. Well, well, see, this is an, this that's actually brings another uh, interesting point because if you look at Maximilian, Maximilian has uh, more opportunities. But if you notice, he has content that ranges from FGC to other mm -hmm. to other games. Yeah, what is variety. And, and mustard, and that's that's yeah. super important too because it's like I said, this game is only going to be here probably two or three years more before the next one can, comes, and teams are looking for you to be able to represent across the board it's the same thing with the twitch partnership too like twitch denies uh on most cases uh your first um your first application because of either just wanting to see uh where your community is at sorry they just want to see where your community is at if your community is in one place then that's not where you that's that's not where you want to be because yeah you could have the check mark 
but you're not going to have the same numbers when it comes down to you moving to another game. And it's why it's so important that if you're going to brand yourself, brand yourself properly. Don't just brand yourself onto one thing. Because again, that one thing, like that, like MK, if you focus only on MK, <clears throat> this could be the last MK. You know, if you focus yourself only on uh, Soul Calibur, that could have been the last Soul, ca Soul Calibur. Right. Well, trust me, I focused on Soul Calibur and every fucking game feels like it's going to be the last fucking game. <laughs> every Soul Calibur that comes out, it's like, uh, yeah, this one didn't sell. We're not going to have any more of those. But like, and then they're just like, hey, you want another one? <laughs> right. I think it's important that people recognize that, like, you know, especially with streaming and, and getting sponsored and, and all of that, it. 90% of the work to reach that level has nothing to do with whether or not you're good at the game. That's what I tell people. Like I see other people that get very, very salty when they lose or when they stream and they, they get a bad match. And I'm like, dude, quit tripping. Like my viewers honestly couldn't give two shits whether or not I win. In fact, they think it's funny when I lose. Half the time they just watch. <laughs> they just want to see me get beat, you know, and Ballin. that was – because I've had people come in and they're like, yo, I can't break like five viewers. And here you are with like 40, 50, 100 viewers. Like, how do you how do you do that? I win all the time. I've beaten you on your own stream. How am I not getting viewers? And I'm like, because my viewers don't give a shit whether or not I win. Like, mm -hmm. I put in effort outside of the game. And that's probably why I'm not as good at the game as I uh, used to be when I first started streaming. Um, because I spend more time not practicing <laughs> than I do practicing. It's because I'm like, you know, doing stuff for content creation, but that's the key. That's the key to like coming up. Like if you go and get, unless you get a top eight at a major and even then those guys, I've seen people get top eights at majors and still not get picked up. But if you get a, if you go yeah. and you build a stream and you build a community and you, uh, put out decent content that does well, like that's who they're looking for. That's who they want. Because some dude who's like quietly going, you know, and getting top eight on a, a major. And it's like, it's like you said, half of those matches aren't even streamed. So like, they're not getting any exposure. Whereas if somebody were to look at my channel and say, well, if I put my logo on this guy's channel, I know I'm going to have at least 30 people watching it a day, you know? And so I'm actually reaching more people than a top eight player because i see that i get i pull more viewers than people that get top eights at majors so you know i have more reach i would be more likely to get picked up and a lot of people don't understand that and it's kind of cool that you brought that up saki mm -hmm. um a lot of people sometimes do come to me for like stream advice or, or like kind of like what they can do better for their streams and Again, if you're not clear on your brand, you're going to have a really tough time. You're going to have a, a, a struggle because you're not, you're already starting off without knowing something, you know? And it's super important to know where you want to go and what your goals are because if you're just streaming to stream, fine. Then, you know, you stream, you stream for your friends. Some people, you meet some new friends with it and you go from there and, you know, we get we, we move forward. But if you're you're streaming and you're trying to look for something, you can't have that idea set. You kind of have to have like, okay, this is something I need to dedicate myself to. Um, and that's why most people don't really survive after like what was it? Their three or four months of streaming. Yeah. They kind of like give up, and and that's why the statistics statistics are um, so high for many new affiliates uh, that come through. Because you get affiliate um, really quickly. Like that's just free. And then mm -hmm. partnership yeah. may never come. Like, there's no, that positive reinforcement ends at affiliate, you know? Mm -hmm. I That's the thing. I get a lot of people that ask me about, you know, streaming and, and content creation, and I generally just discourage it. <laughs> like, I'm like, listen, I don't want to be able to <laughs> shit on your dreams, but you're probably better off not. Like, whatever you're doing, you're better off doing that than this. And they're like, well, why? And I'm like, dude, because like you, you just see the show, man. You just see the stream of me talking shit and having a good time. And it <laughs> looks like fun. But 90% of this job is not fun at all. It's that 10% that is fun that makes it worth it. But mm -hmm. how motivated are you to chase that 10%? And I feel like a lot of people, they don't 
you know, like uh, one guy was like, well, how, how come I can't get even get any viewers? And I'm like, well, when do you stream? I could throw you a host. Well, it's, you know, whenever. And it's like, okay, well, that's why. That, that's, that's, <laughs> I love that, 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 that response. Cause I'm like, okay, uh, that needs to change ASAP. Yeah. Um, and they're like, what do you mean? I, what you can't just stream whatever. I'm like, no, because your audience won't know when you stream. You could be streaming at 12 o'clock in the morning, but if you stream at 7 p.m. Eastern the next day, they're not going to know when you stream. Yeah. Why? Because the the, the different view, viewer audience, number one, and number two, they're not going to know. The people who are already there are not going to know. They're going to expect you again at 12 instead of 7. Yeah. Exactly. And it's not even that stuff. Like, there's, like, a lot of things... And I see colleges are starting to offer college courses in streaming because there's a lot oh, of shit that um, <laughs> people don't know. Yeah, a lot of shit that people don't know that it, it's kind of like basic. You should already know this shit if you're going to jump in. And I, like I said, I usually try to not discourage people, but tell them straight up like, this is going to this is going to sap your soul. Like I don't have a soul, so it hasn't sapped anything from me. <laughs> Do you not have a soul? Because if you have a soul, it's going to take your soul. You know, and I I bring up you know when I got a text from my parents that my grandmother died while I was streaming, and it's like, dude, that's hard. I streamed so for hard. nine hours, and we are two hours into a nine hour stream, and I just found out grandma died. And it's Dangerous like sitting on it. And it's like, how do I, and I, I tell people, I'm like, do you have the motivation to keep going? Because what I did was I just told my stream, I said, hey, guys, literally someone just told me grandma died. I'm feeling kind of shitty. I'm going to keep going. But if I'm shitty, that's why I'm shitty. But how many people would cut the stream and, and take a walk? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got to go. Grandma died. And I'm like, if you're not willing to do that, to just suck it up and fight through your emotions and still put on a decent stream, then you're not going to make it. And not many people can do that. And that's what I try to tell people is like, yo, dude, the things that I've had to give up to even get the smallest amount of success I have, I don't even have a lot of success. I'm not what you would consider a big streamer or even a medium sized streamer. And for the little amount of success I've had to fight and scratch my way to get, I've had to give up a lot of things. And are you willing to give up those things? And a lot of people don't understand that and they don't know that till they get in. And then they spend $500 on fucking equipment and realize, Oh shit, I want to have a social life outside of streaming. I just wasted $500. Yeah. That's the other thing too. Huge investment. And they, they, people make this huge investment and that's okay because everybody starts off different. But if you're right now in a position where you do that and you don't even know where, what you want out of this, you just made a bad investment. I, I honestly can say that because everybody has started with something small. I started streaming when I was still on PS4 streaming from ps4 and i gradually grew to the setup that i have today and still evolving my setup because i kept at it and i kept pushing and i kept wanting to improve and i kept evolving i'm not saying to not to not do that like i'm not saying oh well i have the money why can't i do it go for it but you're making a bad investment if you're not willing to put in the time yeah and there's just so much drama and headaches and things that come along with streaming that people don't take into consideration, you know, because, again, it's like being in a band, right? Like you see the rock star in the music videos and you're like, wow, that guy looks so cool. I want to be like that guy. But you don't see like the bloody fingers from guitar string calluses that, you know, you don't see them sleeping in a uh, fucking park bench for two weeks, you know, because they can't afford a hotel for a gig that's going to pay them 20 bucks. And... Until you, uh, if you don't have that kind of like passion for what you do, you're not going to make it. And I always tell people when they come in asking me questions and they're, they're broad questions like that. How do I get started? How do I get viewers? How do I do this? And I'm like, if you're not asking me a specific answer to a specific question that you are having a problem with in your stream, then already I don't think that you're cut out for it. 
because if you were motivated, you would have found those answers because like, you know, you can't come in and say, well, how do I get viewers? Like, that's a very broad question. You know, like, you obviously <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ways have, to answer that. <laughs> like that you, you have not done enough research on how to even get started with streaming. If that's your question, like if that's the question you're asking me, then you're not ready. You need to, you need a few more minutes in the oven because like, you know, if somebody comes and says, you know, well, what do I do about a, a troll in my chat? It's like, all right, that I can help you with. You know what I mean? Because you've already gone and figured out all the basics. We live in the era of Google. Like there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> like, you know, well, oh, should I get a capture card? I don't fucking know. I can't like that's. Do you want a capture card? <laughs> like, that's what Should I... Should you get one? Like, why Why do you want a capture card? I bought a capture card because I wanted to have goofy-ass alerts and shit on my stream. So it wasn't yeah. like a question of, should I get a capture card? It was, I have a need that would be filled if I did this. So now it's not, should I get a capture card? I go and I ask streamers, hey, man, what's a good capture card? What kind of features should I be looking for? And it's like, if you're a, a budding streamer, those are the questions you want to ask streamers because if you come in you say oh man like how do i hit affiliate and it's like i don't know get fucking three friends <laughs> get three friends and now i watch your stream like that's basic broad general shit and if you're not willing to find out these broad answers then you will not make it when you get to the very specific questions like you won't even get to that point I know I, I'm the ne negative Nancy on that, but I I get tired of seeing people throw away their life like in pursuit of this nebulous dream that is may or may not happen. And they always use me as an example. They're like, well, your stream is doing all right. And I'm like, yeah, well, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice in the matter. It's like, dude, I can't work. What am I going to do? I've got to do something. I've got to get my life in order. I can't just sit here and be a loser. So I started up a stream and I had nothing better to do and everything to lose if it failed. And that's why it did all right. Because I had that motivation beyond I want to be ninja or Dr. Disrespect and be rich and bang a bunch of e-thoughts like my motivation wasn't that. My motivation was, well, fuck, if I don't do this, I don't have a job. So let's let's figure out how this works. Um you know what you wanted. Or did pretty much. You broke up there. I, I didn't catch that. Ah oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I said that you pretty much like got what you had needed or you knew what you needed to get from it. Yeah, I mean, you get people asking about equipment all the time, and I keep telling them, I'm like, dude, buying a fancy setup, like, isn't going to help. Like, nobody yeah. wants to watch that shit. Like, you got to, you know, if you're a streamer, I would suggest watching a shit ton of stand-up comedy because this is literally the next generation of stand-up comedy. That's what this is. This yeah. is what we do. We are stand-up comedians. And you should be watching, you know, Richard Pryor and, you know, Robin Williams. Like the masters of the craft. If you want to be a good streamer, <laughs> take comedy lessons. If yeah. you could do comedy, you could make it here. You could make it on this platform. But, you know, I mean, you probably get more of those people than me, Saki, coming in. Hey, Saki, how do I get this sponsorship in the stream? <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. you really be surprised. Uh, I do get that question a lot, though. Uh, not just from streams, but just like... Um, just in general and uh i'm i'm always willing to help i don't want people to think that they don't um they can't ask or anything i just say it with very hard truths like i don't this is not a this is not something that's like all roses and like we're not ninja you know like what happened with ninja was an incredible opportunity that came obviously with him working for many years uh or many months too um I don't really know the full like beginning of that part, but I know that he was streaming for a good while before that came in. It's the same thing with like Markiplier, and, uh, Jacksepticeye, like they all streamed, they all posted videos and all did this work months and years before they actually got the opportunity that they got. And it's because they just kept doing it because it made, fulfilled them. Um, now it's just more of like, it's now a different story, but they still have that same, uh, that they still have that same sentiment. But again, you gotta, you have to know the truth before uh, you get into this. 
Um, well, I feel like I'm I... helping people by discouraging them because if they are motivated to keep going, they're going to make it. And if me telling yep. you not to do it is enough to get you to stop, then you weren't cut out for it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, interesting thing when, when, so COVID is obviously happening. And for a good while, I, uh, I was actually really scared. Um, and I'm still scared because I don't know what's going to happen in August when these schools open. I don't know if I'll still have a job. I don't know if I'm going to have cut hours. Like even right now, my hours are cut. My paycheck was really bad. Um, and but I'm always honest with my community. Right. And I told them, like, I'm going to do this and it may fuck me over it may not but this is all i have and i'm just gonna take the risk because that's another thing streaming's all about risk and um they honestly helped me get through a, a really tough moment um through, throughout a still tough moment throughout this whole virus and pandemic um and again this this didn't come just overnight this is two or three years in the making that i can actually take the risk and say okay it's a risk but it's a decent risk you know it's a risk that won't won't jeopardize everything so yeah exactly again you came from it of like i've got to make this work this has to work i got nothing else and i feel like that desperation kind of drives you like if you're not desperate to make it work and i mean not desperate in the sense of oh i really really want this like if you're not at a position where it's like this has to work or i'm fucked because I remember I did on stream, I showed people, and I probably get in trouble for bringing it back up, but, like, I showed people how much I make as a streamer, and people were shocked. They were like, oh, shit, really? That's it? And I'm like, yeah, and that's what I'm keeping my lights on with, you know? And a lot of people don't know, like, that the, the, there's a lot of grittiness to streaming, and a lot of people have like some grand vision of how it's going to work. And the reality of it is if you just Google it for like 10 seconds, you'll find out that like, damn, that's kind of tough. <laughs> right? Like, I, oh shit, I don't want to do that. You know, people ask, they're like, you know, why do you stream so many hours? And I'm like, because I don't have anything better to do with my life. You know, like I stream as many hours as I do because I don't know if I'm going to have a job and I don't know if I can get another job so I've got to work this like a job and a lot of people aren't prepared to do that and they don't know what that's like I'm like dude like it's easy to sit there and say when you pop in and out of the stream you know an hour here an hour there I'll go eat lunch I'll come back and it's like yo dude like well I'm I don't have that luxury I'm gonna be here all fucking day and, mm -hmm. you know, are you willing and able to do something for nine hours straight? And, you know, it's one of those things where I, I did it because, you know, it's what else am I going to do? I've got to do something productive. And I think at the end of the day, that's what people should be doing is, is looking. If you want to come into streaming or content creation, try and be as productive as possible. I mean, just put out a YouTube video, put out another one, keep putting out more stream you want to stream stream all every waking hour that you have available to stream and do it consistently at the same time and you know you can make it work you can make it work but you gotta you gotta have that baseline motivation behind it besides i want to play video games for a living because i don't really play video games for a living i stream but most of that is most of my work has nothing to do with playing video games so true. Well, we are now at an hour. Um, I think that's probably going to be about it for the topics we had, unless there was something else you guys wanted to cover. No, nope, um, I'm heading. Yeah, to, I'm heading to RPG Land. Oh, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, any final closing thoughts? Collector. <laughs> I agree. Uh, <laughs> Nerf Jackie Buff Jade. I concur. <laughs> Fucking Buff Kung Lao. Not even Buff uh, Kung Lao. Fix Kung Lao. 
no, 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 no. No, they need you to fix it. I'm not, I've already said that I'm not even going to really play the character online anymore because of all the issues with him. I'm so fucking fed up with that shit. And people are like, don't stop playing Kung Lao. I'm like, I'm not going to stop playing him, but you're going to see him a lot less because that shit is stupid. Like all of his issues that he's had since the game released. And no, Kung Lao doesn't need buffs. He needs fixes. They need to fix the fucking character. That would be my closing thought is fix Kung Lao so I can keep playing him. Um, so social media shout outs. Those of you watching or uh, not listening, you know, later, uh, this will be posted on YouTube, but you can or on my YouTube, Saki's YouTube. I don't know if creative is going to post it on his, but we all have YouTube so you can find Saki Sakura on YouTube. Hopefully you find her on Twitch as well and on Twitter. Right. What is your Twitter Saki Sakura TV, and then YouTube is just Saki Sakura, because I took it. Because <laughs> she took it, right? And Creative also has a Twitter and a YouTube and a Twitch. Please follow him there. Oh. And obviously, I'm going to be continuing my stream for today, but this will also be posted on my YouTube. You can find SoCal Honey Badger um, on YouTube, and you can find me on Twitch, wherever... Wherever there is trash talk to be had, I will usually find myself meandering there. And with that, I believe we are set. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna see you guys later. Um, and hopefully, I can get some more sets with both of you in the future. Hmm. All right, I'll see you All right, guys see later. You later. Bye-bye. Boy. Bye. Bye.